Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content. Today we take a look at the Brinks Mat robbery and how it became known as the crime of the century by members of the UK criminal underworld. So what is a heist, or more formally known as a robbery? A heist is a theft of cash or valuable objects such as artworks, jewellery, electricals and bullion and more from their respected owners. This can take the form of either a burglary or a robbery. The difference in English and Welsh law being that a robbery uses force, which means that some of the heists commonly known as robberies were actually burglaries. The Brinks Mat robbery occurred at the Heathrow International Trading Estate, London, on the 26th of November 1983. 26 million pounds in 1983 is equivalent in purchasing power to around 89.99 million pounds as of today, 2021, an increase of 63.99 million pounds over 38 years. The pound had an average inflation rate of 3.32% per year between 1983 and today, producing a cumulative price increase of 246%. This means that today's prices are 3.46 times higher than average prices since 1983, according to the Office for National Statistics Composite Price Index. A pound today only buys 28.89% of what it could buy back in 1983, when the inflation rate was just 4.59%. The current year-over-year -year inflation rate from 2020 to 2021 is now 0.70%. If these numbers hold, £26 million today will be equivalent in buying power to £26 million by 2022. At the time of the Brinks Mat robbery, £26 million worth of gold bullion, diamonds and cash was stolen from a warehouse. The bullion was property of Johnson Matthew Bankers Limited, which collapsed the following year after making large loans to frauds and insolvent firms to recover the equivalent of what was stolen in bullion. Two men were convicted, and the majority of the gold has still to this day yet to be recovered. Insurers Lloyds of London paid out for the losses, and several deaths have been linked to the case of the Brinks Mat robbery. The Brinks Mat robbery occurred at 6.40am on the Saturday the 26th of November 1983, when six robbers broke into the Brinks Mat warehouse, Unit 7 of Heathrow International Trading Estate, near Heathrow Airport in West London. It was described at the time as the crime of the century. The gang gained entry into the warehouse from security guard Anthony Black. Once inside, the gang members poured petrol over staff and threatened to light them with a lit match, where they would inevitably burn to death if they did not reveal the combination numbers to the vault. The robbers thought that they were going to steal £3.2 million in cash, but they found three long tons of gold bullion and stole £26 million worth of gold, diamonds and cash. Two days after the robbery, a couple saw a white-hot crucible operating in a garden hut at a neighbour's property near Bath, Somerset. Suspecting it might be linked to the bullion robbery, they immediately informed the police. The police arrived and were shown the hut, but they said it was just beyond their jurisdiction and said they would pass the information to the police responsible for that area. The couple who called the police initially were never asked to give a statement to the police or give evidence in court. No explanation has been given for the police's failure to follow up immediately on the tip-off. 14 months later, the premises were raided and the furnace was found. The occupier, John Palmer, a local jeweller and bullion dealer, was arrested. In court, Mr Palmer said he was unaware the gold was linked to the robbery and was cleared of all charges. One of the robbers, Brian Robinson, was caught after a security guard insider, Black, his brother-in-law, passed his name on to investigating officers and Mr. Robinson was later arrested in December 1983. Scotland Yard quickly discovered the family connection, and Black confessed to aiding and abetting the raiders, providing them with a key to the main door and giving them details of security measures in order to make their entrance and escape as smoothly and problem-free as possible. Mickey McAvoy had entrusted part of his share to associates Brian Perry and George Francis. Brian Perry recruited Kenneth Noy, who was an expert in his field, where Mr. Noy would be able to dispose of the gold. Kenneth Noy melted down the bullion and recast it for sale, mixing in copper coins to disguise the gold source. However, the sudden movement of large amounts of money through a Bristol bank came to the notice of the Bank of England, which went on to inform the police. Kenneth Noy went on to be placed under police surveillance. 
In January 1985, Kenneth Noy had killed a police officer, DC John Fordham, who he discovered in his garden. At the resulting trial, the jury found Mr. Noy not guilty. Tried at the Old Bailey in December 1984, Mr. McAvoy was sentenced to 25 years imprisonment for armed robbery. Black, Mr. McAvoy's brother, was sentenced to six years for his cooperation in the robbery, allowing the gang easier entry and a smoother escape. In 1986, Kenneth Noy was found guilty of conspiring to handle the Brinks Mac Gold, fined £500,000 plus £200,000 cost, and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Kenneth Noy went on and served seven years before being released in 94. George Francis was later murdered and Mr. McAvoy was thought to be a suspect in Mr. Francis' killing. Attempts by Mr. McAvoy to strike a deal to give back his share of the money in exchange for a reduced sentence failed, as by then the money had simply vanished. In January 1995, the High Court ordered Mr. McAvoy to make a payment of £27.4 million making him responsible for the entire sum stolen in the brinks Mat robbery. Mr. McAvoy went on to be released from prison in 2000. In 1996, Kenneth Noy murdered motorist Stephen Cameron during a road rage incident. Arrested in Spain and extradited, Mr. Noy was convicted of Mr. Cameron's murder in 2000 and received a life sentence. Much of the three tons of stolen gold has never been recovered and four other robbers were never convicted. In 1996, about half of the gold, the portion which had been melted and recast, was thought to have found its way back into the legitimate gold market, including the reserves of the true owner, Johnson Mathy. According to the BBC, some have claimed that anyone wearing gold jewellery brought in the UK after 1983 is probably wearing Brinks Mac Gold. On the 21st of December 1983, less than four weeks after the robbery, police in Austria arrest five men, four Italians and an Austrian, at a Vienna hotel. Police also recovered 10 bullion bars bearing the refiner's mark and serial numbers of the bars stolen in the brinks Mat robbery. A person named Gordon Parry laundered large amounts of cash from the robbery after the disposal of the gold, according to the Panama newspapers, which show an offshore financial intermediary firm in Jersey named Center Services requested Mossack Fonseca to set up a Panamanian company 12 months after the Heathrow raid on behalf of an unnamed client. Under Mr. Parry's direction, millions of pounds were put through the resulting Faverian and other front companies via banks in Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Jersey and the Isle of Man. A man identified as depositing £500,000 in cash to the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank is thought to have been notorious armed robber David Moore. Two nominee directors from Sark were appointed to Fabirian, the company then issued two bearer shares. Gordon Parry used the offshore firms and recycled the funds, said to have amounted to £10.7 million. Through transactions involving land in London Docklands, some buildings that used to form part of Cheltenham's Ladies College, a farmhouse in Kent for Mr. McAvoy's girlfriend Kathleen Meacock, and a £400,000 home for himself and his family, Crockham House, near Chartwell, Kent. The Metropolitan Police raided the offices of Centre Services later in 1986, in cooperation with the Jersey authorities. They seized papers and two Fabirion bearer shares. In 1987, Jürgen Mossack, the law firm's principal, regained control of the company by dilution and Gordon Parry's appointed a fresh set of Fabirian directors, who were instructed to issue 98 new shares to Western Cross Inc., a front company controlled by Mr. Parry or his associates. In 1995, Brinks Matt solicitors finally took control of Fabirian and its assets. Crockham House was sold and reacquired by Mr. Parry's wife, Irene Beaumont. On the 30th of September 1984, less than a year after the brinks Mat robbery, the banking and gold trading arm of Johnson Mathy, Johnson Mathy Bankers Limited, collapsed and was taken over by the Bank of England to protect the integrity of the London gold markets. Losses amounted to over 300 million US dollars at the time. 
The bank had made very large loans to fraudsters and insolvent businesses over several years, and had serious and unexplained gaps in its records that could not rightfully be explained. The fraud squad was called in and went on to investigate the bank and certain customers the bank had obtained through its years. The so-called curse of the Brinksmat robbery, or curse of the Brinksmat millions, refers to the early deaths of many of those allegedly involved, which makes one wonder, does wealth really solve your issues? These deaths were theorised by members of the London crime underworld as being related to laundering the gold. In 1990, the former treasurer of the Great Train robbery, Charlie Wilson, had moved to Marbella in Spain, where Mr Wilson was suspected of being involved in drug smuggling. Engaged to launder some of the proceeds from the Brinksmat robbery, Mr Wilson lost the investors £3 million, and on the 23rd of April 1990, Mr Wilson was shot dead. Donald Urquhart was one of the launderers of the proceeds of the Brinksmat robbery. Mr Urquhart was shot dead in January 1993 on Marylebone High Street in central London. The supergrass Kenneth Regan assisted police with information about Mr Urquhart's murderer. Graham West was subsequently jailed for Mr Urquhart's killing, as was Mr West's accomplice Jeffrey Heath, who had planned the murder of Donald Urquhart. On December 1998, Hatton Garden jeweller Solly Nahome was shot dead outside of his home. Solly was a financer and associate of the Adams family, who were also suspected of being involved in the laundering of Brinksmack gold. Prior to Mr Nahome's murder, Mr Nahome's associate and jeweller Gilbert Weinter had disappeared from the home that Mr Weinter had shared with his girlfriend on the 9th of March 1998. It was theorised that Mr Nahome and Mr Weinter were murdered as a result of a disappearance of £800,000 from a cannabis deal. While it was suspected that a rival gang murdered Mr Nahome and Mr Weinter to cause disruption, in mid-2001, Brian Perry was also shot dead. On the 14th of May 2003, George Francis was shot dead by John O'Flynn outside Mr Francis's courier business in Bermondsey. George Francis was a former associate of the craze, who was believed to be involved in the laundering of the Brinks Mac gold robbery. Mr Francis has previously survived an attempt on his life when Mr Francis was shot in the shoulder near a pub that he ran in Essex in May 1985. After allegedly failing to pay £100,000 to have a jury acquit Lenny Teddy Bear Watkins, who was on trial for the murder of Peter Bennett, a customs investigator who was shot by Mr Watkins in a struggle, on 24th of June 2015, John Goldfinger Palmer was shot dead. The members of the Brinksmat robbery and those who benefited or lost their lives as a result of the quantity stolen will forever be remembered in the UK criminal underworld. Please let us know what you think about the story of the Brinksmat robbery in the comments below. We also have videos on our channel about individual criminals that were connected to the Brinksmat robbery. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and a share, and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content, then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.